A couple times a year that WWE will clean house on a select portion of its talent, it's never cool when somebody loses their job just knowing that person has strived their entire life to attain that position in a company, and it's even worse when it happens for a wackadoodle reason. I'm Senior Siete for Seven Wrestling, and let's take a look at seven strange reasons WWE stars were fired. Now, before we get into this, we appreciate your support, so if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and iron claw that notification bell. Number one, Serena Deeb. In professional wrestling, kayfabe is the art of presenting a staged fight as if it were real. Kayfabe was all the rage in the early days of professional wrestling, doing anything that made the event seem less real or breaking kayfabe, as it was known, was strictly forbidden. The belief was, if word got out that the matches were predetermined, that nobody would watch them and the industry would crumble. Well, Vince McMahon would kill kayfabe dead in the late 80s when he would admit that wrestling was predetermined in an attempt to avoid having the WWE regulated like a traditional sport. And uh, wrestling didn't suffer. We all knew wrestling was entertainment. I mean, look at the Irish whip. So fake. So it wasn't a big deal if bad guys drove with good guys anymore. If all the guys met up at a Waffle House, it was cool. You know, sometimes. Every now and then, the WWE would flip their lid when kayfabe was broken. Triple H was punished after the curtain call when he and fellow bad guy Diesel were chummy with good guy Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. They threw an absolute fit when CJ, Perry, and Miro announced their engagement while their on-screen characters, Lana and Rusev, were feuding. But one wrestler was actually fired for breaking kayfabe. Straight Edge Society member Serena. The Straight Edge Society was a faction that was headed up by CM Punk and featured Serena as well as current good brother Doc Gallows. And just like their cult leader, they all refrained from alcohol, tobacco, and recreational drugs. In fact, to prove their commitment, the members, along with members of the audience, who pledged their allegiance to the Straight Edge lifestyle, would shave their heads. However, on August 20th, 2010, Serena was released from her contract for being arrested for driving a boat while under the influence of alcohol. Deeb has since denied operating a boat at the time of the incident. However, there are many in the company who believe she wasn't let go because of the rest, as many WWE stars have faced similar charges. There are many who think she was let go because being intoxicated flew in the face of her current gimmick, that of a talent who avoids alcohol. As if shaving her freaking head wasn't enough proof that she was dedicated to the role. Number 2. Enzo Amore well, 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 if it isn't the certified G and the bona fide stud Enzo Amore, and yeah, he's been fired a couple of times, we're going to focus on maybe the first time, because it is ridiculous. During an interview class that took place at the Performance Center, WWE Hall of Famer Dusty Rhodes was giving pointers to Baron Corbin on his interview skills. Enzo raised his hand so that he could give his two cents, and as the class waited for his response with bated breath, Enzo farted. Passed gas. Broke wind. Can't teach that. The man who has zero dimes would be fined $250 for the incident, but after consideration, it was decided that Amore wasn't taking his training seriously enough, and he was fired. Although, in his defense, most farts are probably more pleasant on the ears than a Baron Corbin promo. And honestly, it blows my mind that Vince McMahon didn't find this hilarious. You know, the same guy who loved this, and this, and, uh... This, yeah. Fortunately, Amori was given a second chance and was hired back the next day. Number three, Big Cass. Oh, hey, it's Enzo's buddy. Whose promo did he fart during? Well, nobody's actually. And before we get into this one, I'd like to point out that this is a list of people who were fired for weird reasons, not a list of people who were fired and didn't deserve it. Because in this case, yeah, Cass definitely deserved it. Uh, one of the weirdest wrestling tropes is having a little person come to the ring dressed as your opponent as a way of humiliating them. DX did it with a little person Bret Hart, The Rock did it with little person Booker T, JVL did it with little person Undertaker, Edge and Christian did it with little person Dudley and Hardy Boys respectively, so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary when Big Cass brought out a little Daniel Bryan. The segment was scheduled for Cass to bring him out, have some fun at his expense, then hit him with a big boot. 
However, Cass wanted a more brutal beatdown. He asked the agents, and they were like, nah. He asked Vince McMahon himself, and he was like, no, pal. But Cass went and did it anyways, which is a big no-no. After the big boot, Cass would proceed to rain blows down on the fake Brian and then stand on his chest. This soured the company on Big Cass as a performer, and after some public drunkenness and apparently a broken bathroom door during European tour, Big Cass was sent packing. Number 4. Emma Wow, Tennille Dashwood, otherwise known as Emma, has got to be one of the big what-ifs in the history of NXT. She got there a little too early to be a part of the Four Horsemen's women's evolution, and her dancing gimmick that was great on a smaller stage quickly petered out and died on the main roster. Speaking of bad luck, the Australian superstar would end up being fired from the WWE on July 2nd, 2014 for, uh, let me check my notes. Oh, stealing an iPad mini case worth $21.14. Apparently, Dashwood was arrested for this horrific crime after being busted at a Walmart in Hartford, Connecticut. Her lawyer argued that it was simply a misunderstanding due to a faulty self-checkout machine, and even Walmart loss prevention managers criticized the arrest, stating that the clerk should have just reminded her that one item was not properly checked in, especially considering the low price of the forgotten item. All of this was extremely odd, especially considering several WWE superstars had committed much more serious crimes and they were able to maintain their jobs. So, fortunately, somebody was the voice of reason in all of this, and Emma was hired back shortly afterwards. Number 5. The Highlanders In this age of forbidden doors and TNA superstars showing up on NXT, it's easy to forget that major wrestling companies used to pretty much keep to themselves. In fact, the WWE was so against naming competitors that when Ric Flair showed up with the NWA World Title, they just called Ric the real world champion. Although it's possible they were worried about getting sued. That's why the billionaire Ted skits were such a big deal. It was the first major time they called out a rival company. So appearing on another company's show is a huge no-no, which brings us to the Highlanders. You'll definitely be forgiven if you don't remember Robbie and Rory McAllister. They were a rough and tumble tag team with a bit of a comedy edge who didn't make much of an impression during the Ruthless Aggression era. Well, on the March 27th, 2008 episode of TNA Impact, Robbie was shown in the audience, while Mike Tenay was hinting that other WWE superstars could be in attendance. Although that's like the worst flex of all time. Look how bored Robbie looks. Uh, it didn't matter, though. The damage was done. A WWE official called Robbie and insisted he leave the premises immediately. And once both members of the team were healthy enough to be fired, they were fired. Man, TNA did them dirty. Number 6. Abraham Washington Abraham Washington is pretty much just a footnote in WWE history. He hosted an interview show on the WWE's version of ECW that isn't particularly memorable outside of Tony Atlas doing a very weird Ed McMahon impersonation. Uh, from there, he'd go on to manage the primetime players, and it was during a match between Titus O'Neil and Kofi Kingston on the July 30th, 2012 episode of Raw, where Washington would learn that there is no net on live television. During the bout, Washington would say, Titus O'Neil is like Kobe Bryant at a hotel in Colorado. He's unstoppable, which, in case you weren't around back then, is clearly a reference to the 2003 case where LA Lakers star Kobe Bryant was accused of sexually assaulting a 19-year-old hotel employee at a resort in Eagle, Colorado. Maybe not surprisingly, Washington was released from his contract a few days later. Washington was incensed, and in a Twitter rant, he called the WWE out for all of the controversial moments they had approved, including a 2003 rap battle where the big show hit John Cena with this singer, You're nothing, I'm a giant, in my world, you're the white girl, and I'm Kobe Bryant. Oof. Yeesh. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, good point. Uh, good point there, Abraham. But that might be a matter of Big Show being a top star, and Washington being a new guy, or the fact that Show's comment came during the raunchy or ruthless aggression era, and Washington's comment came during a time when the show had a PG rating. Number 7. Mandy Rose. Former Tough Enough contestant Mandy Rose should have been a slam dunk superstar. She was like Trish Stratus's hotter, younger sister. But for whatever reason, she just wasn't able to find the gimmick to put it all together. Hitting on Jimmy Uso didn't do it. Working with Goldust didn't do it. And honestly, 
I thought her partnership with Otis was going to be the thing to finally help her break through. Go back and watch their interactions during the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble. The crowd loved it. But the audience would go away during the COVID-19 epidemic, and an angle like Otis and Mandy really needed a live reaction to get over. So it didn't. They were unceremoniously split up without a good reason and moved on to other things. Eventually, Mandy would end up in NXT where she finally found whatever it was she needed, and apparently what she needed was to lead a clique of mean girls known as Toxic Attraction. The trio made up of Rose, Gigi Dolan, and JC Jane would dominate the women's division with Rose taking the women's title from Raquel Gonzalez's back, winning the UK title in a triple threat, and Dolan and Jane claiming the NXT women's tag team titles. Rose's NXT women's title reign would last an impressive 413 days before unceremoniously dropping the title in an impromptu match against Roxanne Perez on a random episode of NXT. She would be fired the next day. So what happened? Well, as we mentioned earlier, Mandy Rose is a very attractive young lady, and I don't know if you know this, but attractive ladies can make quite a lot of money on the internet posting uh, adult pictures. Apparently Rose was making quite a pretty penny off of this business venture, and the WWE was not happy about it. The same WWE who was uh, giddy to post this photo on their website, uh, the same WWE who claims that their talent are all independent contractors. Anyhow, we, we understand that the WWE is a public company with a toy contract, yada, 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 and that Mandy had surely signed a contract that prohibits those kinds of photos. So yeah, we get it. But honestly, we shouldn't feel too bad for our former NXT Women's Champ in the first two and a half weeks after being fired, her adult content brought in $1 million. And I'm personally responsible for about 20 bucks of that. Kidding, kidding. Well, there's our list. Did we forget any other weird reasons someone was fired? If so, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hip toss that notification bell. Until next time, I'm Senior Siete for 7 Wrestling saying bye-bye.